I'm going to be speaking on the evolution of printing. So it all started in 200 BC with the wooden block. You take a wooden block, carve it out, dip it in some ink, then you can just press it on a piece of wood or maybe some fabric. In 1440 AD, movable type came along. This is by the Chinese. And this is actually... Well, it's kind of inspired pretty much the, last, to the next 2,000 years of printing. So then we had the printing press, the rotary press, lithography was in there. But then what really got me excited about printing was this. In 1923, this is the... Oh, crap. <laughs> well, anyways, oh, this is, the, uh, this is the duplicator. So it actually is responsible for comic books. So it took wax, printed it on the back, and then that's where comic books kind of got their start. And so then in the 1960s, we had the dot matrix printer. In the 1970s, the laser printer. And in the 1980s, we have the inkjet printer. This is all pretty common for today. But then in the 1990s, what happened is we got the internet. So this completely changed the way that we print. So everything is no longer tactile, it's all virtual. So this is a completely new kind of style of printing. And then, what happens after that? Oh yeah, this is, this is how printing looks today. So now instead of newspapers, we have online versions. Instead of magazines, we have iPads. Instead of e-books, or instead of real books, we have e-books. And when's the last time anyone printed out a photo? I mean, I know that all of my albums look like this, and they don't look like that anymore. But what happened in you know, the, the 2000s, when we got into this century, is that we are, we're, we're experiencing another evolution in printing, where we're going to be seeing 3D printing. So this is the 3D printer. It's a MakerBot. It's about 1,200 US dollars, so it's very affordable. It's been, and it's been around for a few years. So, what, 3, 3D printing's actually been around for 30 years, but it's only in the past 10 years that it's become affordable enough that we're going to start to see it in the mainstream. So how does it work? So you have your, you have your MakerBot, you go onto the internet, and you find yourself a design. You download that design, load it up into the computer, put in the, put in the material you're going to use, and then let it go. And you'll see there it's printing away, and at the end you're going to have whatever it is you wanted. Fabulous. So what can we have right now with 3D printing? Well, because you can print one thing, we can print our favorite internet meme, meme sad Keanu. Or we can print ourselves a guitar. Or maybe we can print ourselves a bikini. Or what about a house? If you get an unenclosed 3D printer, you can actually print a, a greenhouse. So sky's the limit. And so what we have is a manufacturing revolution. Right, so say we have this old car. Where are you going to get a part for a car like that? Well, download the spec on the internet, print it out, and there you go. And it's better for the environment, because you don't have to get that part shipped from the other side of the world. And when you're printing plastic, you, like, often there's a mold and there's excess waste. With 3D printing, you're printing exactly what you need, like this hermit crab. He's printed his little shell. And 3D printing in the past 10 years, it's evolved. So we're, we're, this is HD 3D printing. So it actually has a laser that goes into the, into the resin to heat it up and to in increase the accuracy. So as 3D printing has evolved, we're getting things like this, prosthetics. So imagine downloading a leg and then, well, my leg's broken like this, so I can modify it exactly the way that I need it and I can print one, because it's a 3D printer. Now there's also bioprinting. So you can print skin. There are certain things that doctors can cultivate and grow, but there's certain things that they can't and they actually need to physically print. So skin is one of them, bones, cartilage. These are kind of the low-hanging fruit of, of bioprinting. But this is actually going on today, right now. You can print a human bladder. So this is actually printed on a mesh. Right? And then they, they print the, the, li the living tissue on top of the mesh, and then the bladder grows into that tissue and it biodegrades. Now, everyone take a breath. Need some new lungs? They can print those too. That's on the to-do list. I mean, it's, it's just amazing what's, what's kind of coming next. It's, we're almost there. But what about today? Today, you can go to a, a website called Shapeways, and you can download tens of thousands of jewelry, art, phone. You have, you have a smartphone? You can download the Sculpedo and you can have a mug with your face. So like this cute, adorable pig learning to play a guitar, we are just at the beginning of what we can imagine to do with 3D printing. And 
cute animals are the key to ignite presentations, I've, I've been told. So I'm Nicole Scott. Thanks for listening.